So yeah, I'm going to talk about um, uh, the Game of Life limited, unlimited register machine. Um, this is something that I've been working on for a while that um, I'm really excited to talk about. So maybe to get started with a little bit of a weird question. Um, what is a computer? Um, and this is a little bit weird um, because, you know, there's lots of different definitions of computers. And for this talk, I'm going to exclusively think about computers um, just as a collection of digital logic gates in some interesting configuration. Uh, this here is a schematic for an Intel 4004. It's one of the first microchips that was produced. And really all they are is just a collection of digital logic gates. And so, for example, we can have here um, just an AND gate. You all have probably seen this at some point in the past. Um, all an AND gate is, it's just a function that takes two inputs and returns one output. Um, if neither of the inputs, or if both of the inputs are one, then the output is one. Otherwise, the output is zero. Um, so only in the configuration one, one, do you get output one. Um, there are lots of other logic gates, but maybe one that's interesting to consider for a moment is also the NOT gate. Um, it goes from an input of zero to an output of one and an input of one to an output of zero. So it just inverts the input. Okay. And really, like I promise that is all there is to developing these complicated circuits. AND gates and NOT gates can do everything. Okay, um, now most computers today are built with something like you know, billions of transistors, even there are some that are like bordering on trillions, but the smallest recognizable computer that uses as few transistors as possible, as few of these logic gates as possible, is probably the unlimited register machine. And the way this works is it's a computer with three instructions. You can increment a value stored at a register, you can decrement a value stored at a register, or you can test if a register is equal to zero, and if it's not equal to zero, it's jump to a given address. There's the only three things you can do, but it turns out this is enough to perform arbitrary Turing complete computation. Okay, hold on to that thought for a minute. We'll come back to that. This is Conway's Game of Life. Um, Conway's Game of Life is a two-dimensional cellular automata. It's this thing with the glider that moves across the screen, if you've seen it before. And the way it works is very simple. You have a series of what are called generations. And at each generation, you have every cell is either alive or dead. A cell becomes alive if it has exactly three neighbors. This one has three neighbors, so this cell will become alive at the next generation. This one has five, and so it will not become alive. On the other hand, a cell that is currently alive gets to stay alive if it has two or three neighbors. This one has three neighbors, so it gets to stay alive. So we should expect that the next generation, we will have the sequence alive, dead, alive for these three middle um, cells. And that's exactly what we get. And we're going to do this for every single cell in the entire thing. And we're going to go through as many generations as we want. OK, so that's Conway's Game of Life. What can you do with it? Here's maybe one of the most famous um, configurations. This is called the glider gun. It creates these glider patterns going down and to the right relatively continuously for as long as you want. OK, this seems pretty you know, interesting to see. But like, what's the, what's the purpose of this? Well, you can do not only that, but you can also make it go horizontally. This is called a spaceship. Um, instead of just going down to the right, you can make it go horizontally. You can make it go vertically if you rotate the spaceship the other way around. OK, so where am I going with this? Well, let's consider what happens if we have a glider that runs into a spaceship. Normally, you know, they just hit each other, and then they, go, they both go away. But if we have another spaceship coming in from the bottom, this spaceship hits the glider first, and then the other spaceship coming in from the left gets to continue on to the right. OK, wait a second. That sounds remarkably similar to an AND gate, where only if both patterns are present is the one, the one the spaceship coming from the left allowed to go through to the right. And in fact, it is. So I mean, can we do a NOT gate also? OK, here's a NOT gate. There's no input on the left, and there's an output on the right. We send an input in from the left. And after this, a short propagation delay, we end up with this glider stream colliding with the output. And now there's no output on the right. And so we have, again, input on the left, no output on the right, which seems you know, very similar to exactly this sort of not configuration we want. And I said there was this sort of theorem that if you have enough and and not gates, you can build anything you want. And in particular, you could build an unlimited register machine. And you know you have to limit it because you know, computers in reality aren't infinite size. But let's go with that. OK, so what do you need for a computer? Well, I mean, if you ask some people, they'll tell you the first thing you need is a clock. Um, a clock, you know, if you're an electrical engineer, means you're going to oscillate some crystal at some high frequency. But we're in the game of life. 
So we don't need to worry about physics. We can just connect a NOT gate onto itself. And like all of the electrical engineers out there are going to be screaming, saying like, you know, where is the power coming from? You can't just like, you know, make a thing connect to itself. But like, this is a simulation in the game of life. We can do whatever we want. So here it is. Uh, this is a NOT gate connected onto itself. And, you know, you have to rotate the stream accordingly because gliders don't bend. You can't just curve a trace. And what you end up with is this very nice pattern where it will cycle on and off and on and off essentially forever. Uh, eventually, I'll have to move on to the next slide, but it will just do this as long as we ask it to. OK, so there's a clock. Um, now we need memory, some way to store data for, for sort of a time to retrieve it later in the future. So here's our memory cell. By default, it doesn't do anything interesting. Um, it's an OR gate and a NOT gate connected into each other. But if you have input that comes in from the upper left, then you set this glider, these gliders going in this loop. Even after the input is gone, the gliders are still looping here. And if you send something in from the bottom left, then it clears it out and makes this now have the empty state. And it stays empty. And it's just going to continue in this empty pattern until eventually, from the upper left, again, we're going to have this new glider stream come on in. And the glider stream will come from the upper left and reset this gate back in. And now we'll continue looping and have this one until eventually later, we have another 0 coming in from the left, from the lower left. OK, so there's our memory. Now we need some way to do arithmetic. And this is like the third piece of a computer. You need to be able to, um, at a regularly scheduled interval, store and load data. So here is our arithmetic function. What it's going to do is it's going to add 1. So we have 0 on the left, add to 1. You have 1 to 2. This is counting in binary. We're going 2 to 3. And this is just a very simple circuit construction that's going to add. Two, um, 3 plus 1 is 4. So we're having, now we're going 4 plus 1 is 5. And this will just count up as long as we want. So this is a very simple arithmetic circuit, which for the unlimited register machine is all that we need. We need only need to be able to increment. Decrement is also very simple once you have increment. OK. Um, then it turns out you know, there are lots of other things that you have to build. But I don't, I, unfortunately, we don't really don't have time for those in this talk. Um, so um, this is everything that we need for a computer. So here one is. This is the unlimited register machine implemented on the game of life. And I'm going to pause here for a second because I think it's just nice to watch it. OK, so the way that it works is in the upper left here, we have our clock. This is what counts. It's a NOT gate connected to itself. At the top, we have 16 4-bit registers. Each register can be 4 bits. We then have an ALU over on the right. This is what does the increment or decrement. We have a program counter to keep track of where we are a seven-segment display decoder to send some output to the right. We have the program ROM. This is the code that we actually implement. There's the instructions we're going to run on the bottom. And because I wanted to, um, we have a two-stage two pipeline. So this um, computer can actually fetch and execute two instructions at the same time. Uh, this makes it twice as fast. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to write a program in order to factor the number 15. Um, so why are we going to factor 15? Well, because I think that's just sort of, sort of a fun thing to do. Um, this is um, the instructions you would need in order to do that. And um, so we run it. Uh, it would take actually quite some time to run. Uh, so let me just skip towards near the end. And let me just let it go. I've, I've sped it up a little while using hash life um, and letting it run. And it tells me the answer is that 15 is equal to 3 times 5, which it is. And so if you look up, you know, from the news, you know, you find that like the best quantum computers from 2012 could almost always, maybe with 50% probability, calculate that 15 was equal to 3 times 5. And, you know, I've just introduced um, a computer here that's able to do exactly the same thing with 100% accuracy. So I'm not exactly saying that the game of life unlimited register machine is going to beat quantum computers um, at their own game in the next decade. But you know, I think the evidence is pretty, pretty compelling here. So thank you very much, and happy to take any questions later.